For many cruisers, sea days are the best part of cruising. Sadly though, we see too many first time cruisers and even some seasoned cruisers go about sea days all wrong. So we put together this list of the common sea day mistakes most cruisers still make and how you can avoid them on your next trip. So let's dive in. Welcome aboard cruisers, I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise where we help you see the world one port at a time. Now Heidi and I love sea days. Arguably we love sea days more than ports of call days, especially on some itineraries. We know that a cruise vacation is a time to relax and unwind for many, but sadly one of the biggest mistakes cruisers make is sleeping in on a sea day. We get it, on most seven night cruises, there's usually about two to three sea days depending on the itinerary, coupled with about three to four ports of call days. And those ports of call days can include some early morning stop, with those first tour buses sometimes leaving at 7, 8 a.m., which might mean that you're actually waking up earlier than when you go to work back at home to catch those first tours. So naturally, many take sea days to catch up on some sleep. Sadly, sleeping in on a sea day is one of the biggest sea day mistakes. As the saying goes, the early bird gets the sun lounge chair. If you sleep too late, you'll most likely not get a prime seat on the pool deck for that sea day. Those chair hogs will be out and about claiming those coveted loungers. These are the individuals that wake up early and put towels down on lounge chairs and then disappear and don't come back for hours leaving other cruisers to roam the pool decks looking for a spot. Also, sleeping late means you can miss out on other activities later in the day. Most modern cruise ships offer a variety of things to do on a cruise. Honestly, it's quite tough to fit everything in if you opt to sleep until noon on a sea day. So we suggest getting up early and actually beating the crowds. The best part, getting up early means you'll be tired for a nice afternoon nap. Whether on your balcony or the outdoor decks, there's nothing better than a little midday snooze in the Caribbean. It might seem like common sense that when spending an entire day outside, that cruisers should apply sunscreen. Yet, all too often, we see many other fellow passengers spotting a unique shade of red by day three or four of the trip. Admittedly, we've been guilty at times of not applying sunscreen or applying enough sunscreen on a sea day but we do our best to pack several bottles of sunscreen and to apply it regularly, especially when sailing between ports of call. There are several forms of sunscreen from sprays, lotions, or even the roll-on variety. Whatever version it takes to make sure you and the rest of the family apply it is worth packing. It's not only good to apply once per day. If you use the pools or any of the outdoor water attractions on the cruise ship, it's probably best to reapply that sunscreen later in the day. Also, don't think because you're doing a cold water cruise that you don't need sunscreen. For many, it's obvious that cruises in the Mediterranean or the Caribbean require some SPF. But we've also gotten a bit red sailing in Northern Europe, Alaska, and there's even the potential for some sunburn when sailing in Antarctica. So regardless of the region, it's good to lather up when spending an extended period of time outside. Most cruise ships offer spas with various treatments like massages. It's also possible that your particular cruise ship has a thermal suite with experiences like a sauna, heated stone loungers, steam rooms, and more. So it might be tempting on a sea day to want to indulge in one of these experiences. But odds are you and hundreds of other cruisers are thinking the same thing. So the spa and thermal suite could be extremely busy on a sea day. While it might be possible to get an early appointment if you book on cruise boarding day, the total experience might feel a bit rushed. The spa or onboard salon will be trying to fit in as many cruisers as possible. This could lead to some long waits and delays, which doesn't really sound all that rejuvenating. Instead, pick one of the port of call days and stay on the ship. This is one of our pro cruise tips that we do on almost every cruise. And we have a video right here on YouTube that details all the benefits of staying on board a cruise ship when at a port of call. But in our experience, port of call days are the best time to grab that massage or hit up the thermal suite. It will be less crowded for sure, and you can have your pick of better appointment times. Plus, it's more likely to be cheaper. 
Often cruise lines run spa and thermal suite deals and promotions on port of call days. And if your cruise ship is not advertising these deals, ask to speak to a spa manager to see if there's any way you can get a discount if you elect to use a spa on a port of call day. So coupling less hassles with less money for us is a win-win. It is true on sea days, venues will be busier than when at a port of call. Still, even if the bars are busy or the dining room or the buffet is crowded, there's still always time to interact with the crew. While the crew will certainly be hustling on a sea day, it's fine for you to take a few minutes to say hi, ask them how they are doing. Often on sea days, we run into our stateroom attendant. They are usually more than happy to talk for a few minutes about the trip and share some stories about their time on board. Yes, some crew members are more talkative than others, so don't feel forced to have a conversation. But we have certainly spent time learning more about those on board during these talks on sea days. You may run into your waiter from the MDR at lunch, or your favorite bartender may recognize you and ask you about the tour you had the other day. If someone from the crew says hi to you, even if you don't really remember who they are, say hi and ask how they are doing. With so much going on during a sea day, sometimes it's easy to forget the hardworking crew are the ones making it all happen. So make sure to let them know how much you appreciate them. This also goes for the cruise director and the activity staff. It can't hurt to go up to them after a trivia session or a game show to say thanks and let them know you're having a fantastic cruise. While there are several dining options on most cruise ships, each venue is open for set hours which given your sleep schedule on a sea day might mean that you're skipping breakfast. While you don't need to do a full blown breakfast, we suggest that you have something in the morning to fuel you for a fun filled day on the ship. Even if you plan to take it easy, odds are you'll be in the sun or are planning to have a few adult beverages. So having something in your stomach first thing in the morning is probably a good idea. Not to mention sometimes on sea days, the ship might feel a little rocky. Having some food in your stomach is also a good way to ward off any potential seasickness in case the seas get a bit rough. If you don't want to do a sit down meal or brave the buffet, consider room service. Many cruise lines still offer a free continental breakfast option for room service. Honestly, sometimes it's worth paying the modest upcharge to get room service breakfast on a sea day if you want something more substantial. Heidi loves breakfast. And by looks of me, you can tell I just love to eat any time of day. So having a larger meal in the morning gives us the energy we need to power through the rest of the day. Sea days are a great way to recharge the batteries. This is especially true if you're travelers like us who want to do and see everything during a trip, which means that you have full day tours while ashore. So it's very tempting to relax outside with the ocean breeze and some live music in the background all day. With poolside competitions like the belly flop contest or movies on the jumbo screen, you might not feel like you're missing anything. Yes, we have plenty of friends and family members that plant themselves in a seat for the entire day doing nothing really at all on a sea day. But most of the time on sea days, there are plenty of indoor activities that are worth checking out. Yes, those gamblers can head to the casino for some gaming. There are also trivia contests, name that tune, dance classes, or other demonstrations taking place that might interest you. Depending on the region, there could be enrichment talks or lectures, and no, we're not talking about those port shopping presentations. If nothing else, spend some time roaming around the ship. If you didn't already explore on cruise embarkation day, this is the time to discover a hidden gem or find those public venues you didn't even know existed on your ship. If you decide to opt for a drink package, a sea day is the perfect time to make full use of this upgrade. Now, we're not encouraging irresponsible consumption of beverages. Neither of us would promote cruisers trying to purposely overconsume alcohol just to get your money's worth. Still, on a sea day, it's certainly fine to enjoy a Bloody Mary at breakfast. It is also the ideal time to sip a few frozen drinks poolside, not to mention have a few glasses of wine at dinner or grab a few cocktails before or after the show. Now's the time to try a new drink, and if you didn't like it, that's okay, because you can just go get another one. 
but also don't forget about all the other beverages that are also part of the package. Depending on the cruise line, these can include smoothies, specialty coffees and lattes, freshly made juices, sports drinks, as well as bottles of water or even soda. So if you need an extra pick me up in the afternoon, you can grab that double espresso or grab a few bottles of Powerade and store them in your room in case you need them later in the trip. On sea days, we always grab a few extra bottles of water when we're on a drink package. That way we have them in our room for later on in the cruise, or we can use them the following day at the next port of call. Regardless of the size of the ship, there's bound to be one place that's going to be busy on a sea day. That is the cruise ship buffet. In particular, the cruise ship buffet will be rather crowded right around lunchtime. So instead of battling the lines with everyone else, we suggest you head elsewhere. This is one of the easiest cruise sea day mistakes you can avoid. On many larger cruise ships, there will be a variety of other dining options. There might be a pizza parlor or a burger joint besides a buffet, or perhaps a cafe with sandwiches or snacks available at other dining venues. Almost all cruise ships will have the main dining room open for lunch on a sea day as well. So you can enjoy a three course sit down lunch with the same level of service that you have every night for dinner. Just know that while casual clothes are often allowed, you can't show up in swimwear when you go to the main dining room for lunch. Or if you're looking to upgrade lunch, consider a specialty restaurant. Some of the ship's specialty restaurants will most likely be open for limited lunchtime hours. Usually specialty restaurants feature a pared down lunch menu when compared to the offerings at dinner, but the price will also certainly be cheaper as well. So trying out one of these venues at a lower rate might be an excellent option to see if you think it's worth the added cost. With so many other options available for lunch, there's really no excuse to join the rest of the herd at the buffet for lunch on a sea day. We know it's a cruise vacation with so much going on during the trip, it can be easy to pass on routine things like the gym, but a sea day is actually the perfect time to get in a workout. Odds are the onboard fitness center will be the quietest early in the morning or later in the afternoon, right before dinner. These tend to be the best times to get in a workout or cruisers can take the workout outside. Many cruise ships offer running tracks for a great daytime way to burn some calories. Or if the cruise ship has a sports deck, perhaps work up a sweat in a friendly competition being hosted by the cruise director staff. Unless you're awake right when the pool's open, odds are they'll be too busy during the day for you to get in some laps. But there are plenty of ways to work out on modern cruise ships. So even if you don't want to head inside for the gym, you can find plenty of ways to get in a workout outdoor during your sea day. Perhaps one of the biggest faux pas you can make is thinking that your sea day ends when the sun goes down. In fact, there's still plenty of fun to be had at night on a sea day. It is possible that the sea day may feature a theme night, like formal night, or it might have a special event like the white party or silent disco. These are some of the most popular activities on any cruise ship. It's vital to plan your time wisely during the days in between ports of call so you can take advantage of all the nighttime activity. Not to mention that one of the signature production shows might be playing in the ship's main theater. Or there might be the adult game show happening or stand-up comedian offering a late night adults only set. We know it's tempting to remain in your bathing suit for the entire duration of the sea day. But there is really much more to a sea day than the daytime events. So make sure you pace yourself appropriately and leave enough energy and stamina for a lineup of nighttime fun to round out the entire day. Now that you've avoided all of the typical sea day cruise mistakes we see cruisers make, it's time to ensure you get your cruise started off on the right foot. Right here on YouTube, we have the 21 cruise boarding day mistakes we still see cruisers making, and of course, easy ways you can avoid them. And after watching that video, you'll be one step ahead of everyone else on that first day of the cruise, so the rest of your trip will be smooth sailing.